Tonight, I am repeating the claim that prayer in public schools has a positive effect on students. I believe making formal school prayer in public schools would have a negative impact on student lives for, for many different reasons. My opponent's first argument stated that banning prayer in public schools harms students. Well, first of all, prayer in public schools is not banned. It is perfectly legal. Praying in school is not illegal if not disrupting education or other students. Therefore, making formal, making formal school prayer is unnecessary. Their first supporting claim stated was that divorce rates, teen pregnancy, drug use, and violent crime has risen. I have no argument against the fact that yes, these things have risen in the past 200 years. But there is no evidence that the only reason for this is because there is no official prayer in public schools. For drug use, there is no evidence showing that religion subsides drug use. The, the, the divorce argument is fraud because certain religious groups forbid divorce, which could create domestic violence in those families who are obligated to live with each other because the religion won't allow them to separate if needed or necessary. Laura Evans has stated that Yes, there has been an increase in the percentages of divorce from 1960 until now. However, this is probably more of a reflection of the growing economic independence of women than a moral decline. The second supporting claim has stated that students are being deprived of their freedom of religion. Claiming that students are deprived of their freedom of religion is immoral because public schools are projected for education, not religious performance. Then the last supporting claim said that child abuse and teen suicide has risen. Once again, I have no argument towards the supporting claim. It is true that child abuse and teen suicide has risen, but there are no facts to show that this is because of not having formal school prayer in public schools. Now we move on to the next argument, which my opponent has stated that prayer is a beneficial practice and should be kept in our public schools. I disagree. To some individuals, prayer is not a beneficial practice in public schools. I took a sample from 10 random students at Cal Poly and asked if they believed prayer would be a beneficial <coughs> practice for public schools. Six out of 10 said no. So in conclusion, prayer in public schools isn't a beneficial practice for everyone, maybe for some. Their, supporting claim, their next supporting claim has stated that prayer has been around for 200 years and that is relevant to the topic. It is almost impossible to name all the religions and all the practices in the United States, a place so diverse. An unknown author had stated, school prayer would bring more controversy between religious groups. What if the Buddhist community suddenly began agitating to have Buddhist prayers in school? Or Jainism, Christianity, Judaism, Native American rites, Wicca, they are all recognized religions that pray, that pray to their own divine spirit. Uh, should that be a part of the curriculum as well? If you only want to advocate one religion, you're forcing taxpayers to support a religion they do not believe in, and you are forcing them to pay out of their pocket. My opponent's next supporting claim stated that our government has always been based on religious principles. I disagree. School prayer violates the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment, which provides that government shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion. Because public schools are government funded, prayer led by school officials or incorporated into the school routine amounts to government established religion. The First Amendment does proclaim freedom of religion, meaning praying on a voluntary basis, not in public schools. According to the Supreme Court, religious upbringings is the responsibility of the parents of these students and not the government or public schools. Our founding fathers and creators of the Constitution uh, were either agnostics or atheists, and they manifested the Constitution and the Bill of Rights to decentralize religion from government policies and actions. An unknown author has stated that this simplistic mindset must have the founding fathers spinning in their graves. They saw the danger of a theocracy and created a government specifically devoid of religion and gave it mechanism to keep religious motives out of public life. Therefore, to say our government has always been based on religious principles is incorrect. Then the last supporting claim says that three quarters of Americans favor prayer in schools. 
After researching where the statistic came from, I found out this was from a poll from udebate.com. It was a poll that was on a school prayer debate. This poll does not show any evidence that this poll represents the population as a whole. It is not a representation of the whole country because we don't know how many people voted. It could be a generalization of the whole population through a sample. After voting, it didn't show how many people voted, where people voted from, how people get access to the poll, what if this poll is on different religious websites, so saying that three quarters of Americans favor prayers in school has no evidence. So in conclusion, making formal school prayer in public schools would have a negative impact on student lives. Thank you. All right, uh, you labeled the secondary points pretty clearly. I think you did a good job challenging the principal on the first point. You need to have a little bit clearer explanation about what you mean. Uh, I think I understood the point that you were trying to make, but I think it could be clarified more. Um, the challenge to the link of prayer to all those benefits, I thought that that was a good challenge, the absence of evidence in those particular points. On one point, you do offer a counterclaim uh, that's supported by uh, a piece of evidence, although it's, a, it's also a conclusionary piece of evidence, but at least we have some authority on that point that it's maybe having to do less with uh, changes in our um, morality and more to do with economic changes. I thought that worked pretty well. Citation, uh, excuse me, the um, Transition to the second point was okay. Uh, I, the relevance of that point, mm, I'm not sure what, what, how much you get from that particular argument. Uh, I thought that uh, you had some stronger arguments, again, challenging the relevance between the beneficial practice of prayer and all of these other things. Um, I don't know that your personal sample, I mean, why is your personal sample any better than that uh, sample that's on the website that you're criticizing later on? It doesn't make much sense there. Uh, you've got some hypotheticals about all the different kinds of religions that might have to deal with. Uh, uh, that's a practical issue. I'm not sure it addresses the main point that you're dealing with. Uh, the Establishment Clause, I think that's a clearer argument, and the Supreme Court ruling on that point is reasonable. The notion that the Founding Fathers were agnostics or atheists is asserted. Um, the notion that the Constitution or the country uh, ignores uh, religious principles, I think it does, it does uh, ha you know, separate the, um, the idea of a theocracy, but the notion that there's a principle of uh, non-religion, I think, uh, is problematic for you. And it, it undermines the point that you make earlier, which is that people have a right to prayer. Uh, <coughs> we just don't have a right to government prayer. And I think that that's something that needs to be developed a little bit more. And then you spend a whole bunch of time criticizing this one poll where there's no explanation about how wide it is and so on and so forth. How, how is it relevant, even if it is a valid point? Does it demonstrate <coughs> that there would be some advantage? I think that's the better argument on that rather than all the general criticisms of the poll. All right, I got Luis's oh, oh, his evaluation form just is not on top. Luis, you're going to be our next speaker. What does this make you, 11? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the thing that I will be responding to 